now let's look at okay let's look at prashant kishore friends yeah is it time to look at prashant kishore i think it is so this was uh, something that prashant kishore said on january 27th okay this kumar ke dal jadyu ko mahagathbandhan mein agar wo ladenge to unko 5 seat bhi nahi aayega और ये मेरे बयान दो तीन महीने से आ रहे हैं उनके दल वाले इतने घबराए हुए हैं उनको मालूम है अगर प्रशांत किशोर कह रहा है कि पांच सीट नहीं आएगा तो नहीं आएगा इसीलिए वो आपको में है कि भाजपा की ओर भागे कि दाहिने भागे कि बाएं भागे नीतीश कुमार के दल का महागठबंधन के साथ इंडिया गठबंधन में अगर वो चुनाव लड़ेंगे उनको पांच सीट भी नहीं आएगा अगर आएगा तो पूरे बिहार की जनता के सामने खड़े होकर हम अपनी गलती के लिए माफी मांग लेंगे सो ही सेट दिस and that of course nitish kumar no, i'm not saying he was the reason why nitish kumar quit or whatever but he did yeah right after this he did and uh, now after that he said this ram likhe likhe ek saal ke mere vaktavyo ko dekhenge to shayad ek matr vyakti main raha hu jo kehne ko kar raha hai ki nitish kumar bas kabhi bhi palak sakte hain aap mere kitne bhi vakt ko utha kar dekh lijiye हर जगह हमने कहा है ये नीतीश कुमार की राजनीति का हिस्सा बन गया लेकिन आज जो घटना हुई है ये नीतीश कुमार को इस संदर्भ में नहीं नीतीश कुमार पलटू राम है या पलटू राम नेताओं के सरदार हैं ये तो बात पहले से जनता जानती है आज की घटना ने अभी जो हुआ है इसमें ये दिखाया कि पूरे बिहार में जितने राजनीतिक दल और नेता है सब पलटू मार आज ये भी तय हुआ की नरेंद्र मोदी अमित शाह और भाजपा वाले भी उतने ही बड़े पलटू मार है तो अभी दो महीना चार महीना पहले तो आ रहे थे कि नीतीश कुमार के लिए बिहार में भाजपा का दरवाजा बंद है ये पलटू मार पूरी राजनीतिक व्यवस्था है इसलिए कि कम तक जो नीतीश कुमार को गाली दे रहे थे भाजपा के वर्कर समर्थक कार्यकर्ता आज ही से इनको सुशासन का नया प्रतिमूर्ति बताने लगेंगे so he says if you look back at my remarks then you would find out that i was the only person who on camera said nitish kumar can change his side any time people already know that nitish kumar is a palturam and sardar of palturam however today's incident has shown that all politicians in bihar are bihar are palturam and also in another i think in the same press conference he said that now that british kumar has allied with the nda he is not going to get more than 20 seats and in the uh, assembly elections jdu is going to be wiped out that's what he is now saying uh, prashant kishor after his switch uh, but prashant kishor is a very interesting character no uh, so i thought that like, we should we should spend some time sort of trying to figure out what he is up to um so as far as you as far as i know like i mean i know um 16 months ago prashant kishor quit uh his old job now what was his old job right uh, he was a mercenary to put it very simply there are to give you a very realistic picture of how political systems in india right now are working um there are of course the front facing guys who are are friendly politicians who are there saying things whatever but in the background they have this giant staff which is doing a few things one is of course they are feeding words they are basically giving them the words to speak and there are people who are doing analytics and deciding what are the words that need to be said right so till until very recently data wasn't realistically used in electioneering in that big of a way but in 2012 2013 when prashant kishor went with uh, uh, narendra modi he essentially started this whole political analytics and political campaigning consulting firm called ipac and they are the ones who were providing the analytics but also making strategies for politicians so that they can do elections in the best way possible so what do these consulting people do they go on the uh, field they do a bunch of surveys they do like progressive surveys which is they will do a survey now then 115 days later then 115 days later and then in the middle they will ask the politician to do certain things which is like oh say these things or say that or promise this or promise that when you go to rallies then they see if the uh, trend is in favor of the politician or not and then 15 days later between that time they will tell the politician to do something else 
and then they would test that out so then they in in a progressive way over a period of a few months they figure out what the people in the area genuinely want to hear and they make the politicians say those things and then of course uh, vote getting the second thing they do is they use data analytics to figure out caste and uh, religion and socio economic status of people and then they sort of figure out what sort of messaging works on the ground so they combine all of these things they come up with a the plan they come up with a the strategy they give it to the party and the politician and then the the job is done it's like a consulting thing okay that's what prashant kishor used to do uh, he did it for multiple parties not just bjp he did it for bjp then he did it for aap uh, he did it for ysr then he did it for dmk mamta banerji and uh, i think for congress briefly he did something but then that didn't work out and of course you know modi ji to the hi pehle so bunch of parties he has worked with and he has done this for that is prashant kishor's background so prashant kishor uh, essentially ha huh, he help uh, congress in punjab is what chota don is saying yeah i think he did yeah so prashant kishor has done this with multiple people he was a consultant right with who was doing these things now what happened is 16 months ago he announced that he is quitting everything he is basically just jhola leke he is going away <laughs> uh he started a padyatra called jan suraj padyatra right jan suraj is not the party's name it is called the padyatra's name is jan suraj it is a movement according to him but he also says it's not really a movement i'll come to that um so he started this and now he's walking all across bihar he's spending time in villages he's talking to people he is holding meetings trying to figure out what is wrong there etc etc but he's also not asking for votes because the party hasn't been formed yet that's the interesting part there of what he's doing exactly and that's what i wanted to sort of talk to you about a little bit okay before this though before the 16 months he, there was another phase in prashant kishor's life where he had joined nitish kumar he had joined jdu and he was like said that they said that he will be in rajya sabha soon whatever but something happened there and that also broke off so he wanted to join politics and nitish kumar is the person he chose he went with the party but that didn't work out that didn't last for even months so that did, yeah so he was like i don't want to i didn't want to go into parliament also which is another thing so yeah Uh, has political consulting what pk done has mercenary ever been said as improper by any retired eci chief i r c the officer said pk should formally join a party before doing consulting um i don't think it's illegal i i think he's offering some services to politicians who desperately need it and uh, yeah hiring a consultant is fine like if businesses are doing it should political parties also do it i don't think there is a problem with it yeah i don't think uh, campaigning well or doing elections in a proper analytical way where you are doing like data analytics etc and then figuring out messaging and finally getting a result is per se like bad but then it is also a question of resources right some so in all of his uh, like speeches that i have seen so like he has this youtube channel wait i just showed to you this is his youtube channel called jan suraj right it has 1.76 million people already uh, subscribed already and he basically mostly puts up videos of live streams of essentially wherever he is look at this 5 days ago 5 days ago everything is live streamed all of it yeah very interesting no so i was i was watching a few of these the recent ones and what i saw was it's a little strange how he's doing this okay um strange in the sense it's it's unusual i wouldn't say strange it's a little unusual so what he claims what prashant kishor claims is that he did his job working with all these politicians and you know like making them win etc 
but then when they came to power they didn't really do anything for people so he was extremely disappointed so now he's just doing going to do it himself uh, that that's his logic of why he wants to do this but what he is doing also is that he's telling people that he used to earn hundreds and crores of rupees doing this consulting mercenary thing right which is uh, you know political consulting and literally he opens every speech by telling people that mera naam prashant kishor hai i know you don't know me maybe you have heard of me that whoever i touch the golden touch of prashant kishor becomes a raja main wo pehle karta tha and then he explains why he does it uh, like how he does it right mm. then he tells them that you know for all, for the work i did it was not like i was earning 5 lakh it was not even 10 lakh it was not even a crore it was not 10 crore it was 100 crore i was getting 100 crore 150 crore for doing this job the parties would come to me i would consult with them and that that was my fees maine mehnat kama ke mehnat karke ye fees kamai hai and he says this in public like in multiple places i saw him say this right um that's a that's a strange opener one right unusual opener which is you are basically just telling people up front that guys i have left like my 100 crore life and come here to walk around in bihar and talk to you it's like a reverse modi <laughs> he's doing a reverse modi right modi is like chai wala se i became prime minister and this guy is like i it's from riches to rag story it's like i have everything i had everything i was earning in crores whatever whatever and then he he basically goes downwards it's it's strange again i keep saying strange it's unusual i think he never said he earned hundreds of crores no no he's regularly saying that in in like different press conferences i can show you also in a few places he does he does he says that Uh, he says it in this way the modi way also kitna 10 lakh no 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 it was no 1 crore no 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 10 crore no 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 100 crore and you know it's again as i said it's unusual right you are you are basically sitting in front of these people and telling them listen i used to earn this much money now i'm walking in bihar mm yes i had such a life i've given everything up i'm come here and i am talking to you and in so then you know after that he starts scolding people yeah it's not like he is wooing them he is scolding them jin nesaon ne aapka haq loot kar raat ko itna chori bana diya ki aap apne bachcho ke liye kapda nahi khareed sakte pair mein chappal nahi hai jin nesaon ne aapke bachcho ka ye surdasha kar diya ki unke sharir par kapda nahi पैर में चप्पल नहीं पेट में खाना नहीं हाथ में किताब कॉपी नहीं वही नेता कल अभी चुनाव में वोट मांगने आएगा आप लोग सब लोग जाति और धर्म के नाम पर उसी को वोट दीजिएगा तो आपका बच्चा नहीं भोगेगा तो कौन भोगे आपका बच्चा नहीं भोगेगा तो कौन भोगेगा बताइए अपने यू सीन द जवान एंड वन या प्रशांत किशोर इज बेसिकली गिविंग अ जवान स्पीच एवरी वेर ही गोज Where he's like, अरे ये ये एम पी सॉरी पॉलिटिशियंस को क्यों वोट दे रहे हो आपके बच्चे के चेहरे को वोट देख के वोट नहीं देते हो तुम लोग सो दिस इज अगेन अ टैक्टिक दैट ही डज ओके सो ही गोज एंड ही इज लाइक लिसन आई हैव नॉट कम टू आस्क यू फॉर एनी वोट आई हैव नॉट कम टू यू टू आस्क फॉर एनी वोट्स आई हैव नॉट कम हियर टू बेसिकली से दैट आई एम गोइंग टू बी चीफ मिनिस्टर और वॉट एवर बिकॉज आई डोंट इवन हैव अ पार्टी राइट नाउ uh but i have come here to talk to you about why you vote what is the reason you vote for and he keeps saying that you know you never look at the faces of your kids and their halat or think about their future when voting what you are voting for is something like are pulwama ho gaya sabne vote diya so i am going to vote here are uh, you know like i got like uh, rice for 5 rupees that's why you are voting you are voting for uh, you know oh desh ke liye vote dena hai vote de rahe ho ram mandir aa gaya vote de rahe ho you are you are looking at all these things and voting and giving your vote to the politician but you are not looking at your kids and saying that oh my kid doesn't have education maybe i should vote for this fellow um 
सो ही इज लाइक आप पॉलिटिशियंस के चेहरे देख के वोट करना बंद करो यू हैव टू लुक एट योर किड्स फेस एंड देन वोट ओके अगेन इट्स इट जवान स्ट्रेट आउट ऑफ जवान ओके देन ही गोज ऑन टू आस्क देम क्वेश्चन राइट ओके लेट मी आस्क यू अ क्वेश्चन ओके आई एल आस्क दिस आई एल डू दिस विथ चैट ओके चैट Do you think it is important to teach your kids? If you think it is, say yes. Okay. Do you think it is important to uh, important to <laughs> teach your kids and do education? First answer is no. What an ass! Like I know you guys are asses. Okay, asses. <laughs> Jay Purnu says yes. Are you? I know code most and you might not have kids I don't have kids either but do you think kids in general should be educated <laughs> amazing yes no yes no <laughs> I don't like kids no <laughs> so I clearly can't do this in chat but when he does it in bihar people are like hey yes yes uh bachcho ka future so he's like do you want your the future of your kids to be great and like, yes 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 and then he turns around and says you are lying you are lying you don't want their betterment you don't want their uh, ye yeah, because you are voting for pulwama because you are voting for ram rajya because you are voting for uh, you know your jat ka aadmi you are like looking at caste when you are voting so he starts scolding them and he continues to scold them and he does that throughout yeah for like 20 25 minutes he just goes and scolds people and then goes away <laughs> okay main bachcho ke naam par jhoot bol rahe hain dekh jhoot bol rahe ho apne bachcho ki chinta hi nahi hai koi neta kyon chinta karega aap aaye hain humko dekhne aap dekhiye apna durdasha aap log humko dekhne aaye hain kaun aadmi hai jo apna ghar parivar 16 mahina se chhod kar paidal chal raha hai listen to this part aap apna dasha dekhiye koi aisa ghar nahi parivar nahi जिसमें आपका जवान बच्चा रोजी रोजगार के लिए आपको छोड़कर बाहर नहीं गया हम तो सोलह महीना से अपना घर परिवार छोड़े हैं आपका पति आपका बेटा सालों साल से आपको छोड़कर चला गया जो गया है लड़का मजदूरी करने उस साल में एक बार कोई छत में घरे आता है तो दस दिन के लिए आप उसका मुंह देखते हैं हम पैदल चल रहे हैं वो तो आदमी वहां अपना शरीर गला रहा है गाली खाता है लाख जूता खाता है कष्ट करता है अपना पेट काटता है कि घर छह हजार आठ हजार भेजेंगे तो हमारा बाल बच्चा खाएगा और आपसे पूछते हैं वोट काहे दिए थे तो आदमी हंसता है पुलवामा हो गया मोदी जी का लहर था उसमें सब दे रहा था तो हम भी दे दिए हमारा जात वाला खड़ा था इसलिए दे दिए राम जी का मंदिर बना इसलिए दे दिए बताइए आपके घर का सवाल वो अपना जीवन थपा रहा है छह हजार रुपया के लिए और जिस दिन आपको राजा बनाने का समय है उस दिन वोट आप ऐसे ही दे दीजिएगा तो आपका दुर्दशा नहीं होगा तो किसका दुर्दशा हो यही बात बताने आए आप सुधरने वाले नहीं है आप सुधरने वाले सोलह महीना से पैसल चल रहे हैं ए भैया बिहार में विकल्प नहीं था अब आप एक दल बनाइए हम लोग सब आपको वोट दे के दिखाएंगे आप बिहार को सुधारिए हम आपको हाथ जोड़ रहे हमको आपका साथ नहीं चाहिए आप हमारा साथ क्या कीजिएगा आप तो वो लोग हैं जो अपने सामान के लिए अपने बच्चे के लिए आप नहीं सुधरे आप हम हमारे लिए सुधरिएगा अरे आप सुधरने वाले नहीं हैं। बिहार में आदमी को सुधरना ही नहीं यहाँ पांच बरस बैठ के आप रोते हैं ए भैया सड़क नहीं है रोजी रोजगार नहीं है खाने को ठिकाना नहीं है घर नहीं है बड़ा भ्रष्टाचार है कोई बीमार पड़ जाए तो दवा डॉक्टर इलाज नहीं है लेकिन पांच पर इसके बाद वोट होगा कम वोट होगा तो इस सब बात भूला जाइए बिहार में आदमी को कुछ नहीं चाहिए बतियाने के लिए जा अठाने के लिए पांच किलो भाग बस यही दो चीज आपको चाहिए और कुछ नहीं चाहिए तो लालू नीतीश आपको जांच बांट रहा है तीस साल से मोदी जी पांच पर इससे चार किलो भाग का जुगाड़ कर दिए है अब बोला में भर के हम लोग वोट ही दोनों को दिए जा रहे हैं इसीलिए इस दुर्दशा में जी रहे आप तो so basically that's what he does you heard him right he's genuinely he's just scolding max is saying my live streams are awesome thank you so much but why is it wrong i don't get it twinkle uh, no twinkle i'm not saying it's wrong okay guys 
why are we doing this? Like, you know, why we are doing this is because I thought this is unusual and interesting. The I have to say this. So when you look at Prashant Kishore's sort of general opinion that people have about him right now online, which is, of course, like uh, people who are in your circle, etc. People see him as a hack. People see him as a person who just like is uh, like, you know, services for hire kind of person, person without any quote unquote morals. And he made Modi win. So then therefore that is a big thing. And then of course he's, uh, you know, aligned with parties you don't like or something like that. That's also another phase. But what people don't look at or are not looking at right now is this shit, which I think is very interesting because all said and done, this man is super clever. He is. I mean, there is no denying that, right? People keep going to him for uh, doing projections of, oh, what will happen in 2024? Do you think anything will happen in this state election versus that state election or whatever? They wouldn't go to him unless they thought that he would give some reasonable, a smart answer, which their audience will get like a, uh, you know, like, like some benefits from, right? So he's not an idiot. Clearly not. Um, he, he is basically, you can call him a mercenary, which I did, which is okay, but I don't think any, there is anything wrong with offering your services to people who are going to give you that much amount of money for said services. Capitalism friends, late stage capitalism, just embrace it and move on. Just saying anyway. Uh, but what, what I was saying earlier was that the ethical part comes in where someone like a um, BJP can only afford someone like Prashant Kishore if they have that much amount of resources, right? All these political consulting firms like Jarvis, which we spoke about last week, right? They will be charging a bomb as well, right? Only a party that has that much money can actually afford these services, which is adunik, you know, like uh, futuristic data gathering and all these services. But is that the fault of Prashant Kishore? I don't think so. That is the systemic fault which we need to talk, talk about and deal with separately. Right? And uh, to, be, to be perfectly honest, now parties like Amadmi Party, etc. are making inbuilt like Prashant Kishore type models. Like they have like internal survey systems, they have internal uh, sort, sort of consultants who are now working with the party. Even Congress has this Kanungo fellow who is also doing the same things, right? So, um, yeah. So, Prashant Kishore is seen as a hack. Prashant Kishore is seen as a person who has no morals or offers his services for making the next dictator win. That's essentially what he does. And now, nobody is looking at what he's actually doing, which I find very strange. And I have been tracking him for a while and I find him very interesting because of things that like this, which I just showed you, right? This is not normal campaigning. Also, he's not campaigning for 2024. He does not honestly give a shit about 2024 right now. Uh, he's focusing on Bihar elections, which are two years from now. Uh, and he's just walking and like talking to people and scolding them. He hasn't formed a party yet, which is also another thing. He hasn't formed a political party yet. This is the Jan Suraj Padyatra. Uh, it is a movement. But he also says that it is just my personal connect exercise that I'm doing with people of Bihar. He says that every village that he's going to, he's talking to the panchayats and he's coming up with a solid plan with them, a 10 point plan with them about how that particular village can be improved and what can be implemented to get it improved. Uh, and only then is he leaving that. So like for two, three days, he spends the time there scolding people, talking to the panchayat and also running youth clubs. So another thing he does there is uh, there are so he encourages the young people in, in basically the area to come there and essentially do exercises like what will you become when you grow up, right? And then he, he or his party members volunteer to give career advice to kids or talk to them. He does sports, right? Then he goes to like specific Dalit areas. Again, he also says this, which is in a village, there is of course the upper caste area and Dalits are in another area. So he realized that 
at some point he realized that oh people from the dalit societies are not coming to participate in these clubs so he went and started forming clubs there as well so every village that is going to he's forming multiple clubs mahila dalit youth clubs which do things like this he is scolding people like this which is what you just saw like giving giving like these uh, gatherings which are attended by quite a lot of people now right when you are talking about a village that's a lot of people and he's just uh, basically saying mujhe vote mat do yeah you you have come here to ask me who to vote for i'm not going to tell you you vote for whoever you want i'm just telling you vote for the right reasons vote for the right reasons look for the candidate that is going to basically be talking about your kids who is going to be talking about the migrant labor that is going outside so two of the big issues that he keeps bringing up right is one is of course kids education all the things the second is migrant labor okay so his whole thing is ki biharis have lost their pride biharis have lost their regional pride a they are at the mercy of other states to get employment so there is a giant amount of migration of young people that is happening out of bihar and going to other states and finding work there and then they keep coming back to chhat puja 6 6 8000 kamane ke liye they go out and then they keep sending money that's his whole rhetoric he is he is saying that you know we need to find a way to keep them here and so that they work here at least in this area or in this state if not this village so he wants to make a plan for that mm. and he also says that for every meeting that he does either there are extremely old people or women so most of the meetings that he does is full of women because their husbands slash brothers you know males in the family have gone out to work somewhere or there are old people who have come back and they have basically given up working so he's like you know this is this is a big thing there and uh, when when your kids come back from working to you know like to talk about if elections and politics tell them this like the he tells the women you tell tell your husbands that i want you here now i want you to to contribute to the house like i do and i also want you to stay here so let's vote for someone who is going to make sure that you are you don't have to go somewhere else i i feel like that's a very interesting narrative he's like that person who earned shit ton of money and is now going spiritual route cuz he didn't get his self actualization and satisfaction with his life and i think better late than sorry i agree yeah twinkle absolutely he might be one of those people who is like sab to kar liya i have reached the pinnacle of everything but now i need to do something else this is not satisfying me anymore is there even a right candidate chintan so here's the thing chintan what he has been simultaneously also doing i i think you know this would be very interesting think about it right so he has given hints he's not telling people who to vote for right now okay he's not right now right now he's not um he's saying that ah tum 2024 mein kisi ko bhi vote do but think about the kids think about the kids simultaneously what he's doing is that in every village he is making committees village level committees district level committees uh zilla level committees all the committees right in that village he is basically saying that okay you are working for jan suraj now right you are basically propagating this sort of thought that i have laid down that we have to educate the voters to vote for a candidate that should talk about education healthcare of your kids right mm some people have been telling him you need to contest in 2024 you need to have some uh, people who will contest in 2024 right and he's like i don't have a party but why don't you contest as an independent aha think about it. think now think about this he's preparing fertile ground for people to think about an alternative like yeah the existing parties are all garbage i need to think about the kids i need to think about him who has the most incentive to do this an independent candidate yeah so what i think will happen soon and i think it will start now is that a lot of independent candidates might be coming up in bihar as we speak like a lot of independent candidates even for mps maybe and also mp will be a little difficult but i'm thinking more on an mla level or even panchayat level lot of independent candidates will come up and because there is no alternative people will start voting for these independent candidates now when he officially actually forms the party yeah it's ripe for taking 
all these independents will start immediately aligning with the whatever party he forms and he will have a ready made party yeah and then people will know that you know oh i voted for this independent candidate but now like there is this alternative here i feel like that's a very interesting and clever strategy just to test it out right now he's saying i don't care the district level committees are going to handle this whole thing and they will basically do it themselves right so he's doing it um he's basically creating a fertile ground for independent alternative candidates to come up and then suddenly his party will swoop in and be like i was the alternative all along and yeah that would be fascinating yeah bihar mein aur kuch hota hai nahi आपके हमारे सभी के बच्चों के लिए पढ़ने की अच्छी व्यवस्था होनी चाहिए कि नहीं होनी चाहिए आपने अभी मुझसे बताया कि आपके बच्चों के पढ़ाई की व्यवस्था होनी चाहिए क्योंकि आपको ये मालूम है कि अगर आपका बच्चा पढ़ेगा तो उसका जीवन सुधर सकता है तो अब जितना लोग आप लोग आए हैं अपने अपने बच्चों का जरा चेहरा याद कर लीजिए और अपने बच्चों के नाम पर एक बार ईमानदारी से बताइए आप में से किसने अपने जीवन में एक बार भी बच्चों के पढ़ाई के लिए वोट दिया देखिए अभी किसी ने नहीं दिया है ना यही आपके दुर्दशा का कारण आपको ये बात मालूम है कि पढ़ाई होने से जीवन सुधरेगा विधायक कोई बन जाए मुख्यमंत्री कोई बन जाए कोई प्रधानमंत्री बन जाए जब आपका लड़का पढ़ेगा ही नहीं तो डॉक्टर इंजीनियर कलेक्टर नहीं बन सकता उसको मजदूर ही बनना पड़ेगा आप में से कुछ लोग ये भी हैं कोई पूछ सकता है अच्छा इसका क्या गारंटी है कि पढ़ाई के लिए वोट देंगे तो पढ़ाई हो जाएगा हम आपको बता रहे हैं कि आप पढ़ाई के लिए वोट दीजिएगा तो पढ़ाई होगा अगर हमारी बात पर भरोसा नहीं है तो आपको गिनवा देते हैं देखिए बिहार से हम लोग घर घर से पांच किलो अनाज के लिए मोदी जी को भाजपा को वोट दिए एक किलो चोरी करके चार किलो अनाज मिल रहा है कि नहीं मिल रहा है आपने वोट दिया भाजपा को सिलेंडर के लिए तो सिलेंडर का दाम 1200 हो कि 1300 सौ घरे घर सिलेंडर पहुंचा है कि नहीं पहुंचा आपने वोट दिया हिंदू मुसलमान के नाम पर राम मंदिर बनाने के लिए अयोध्या में तो बिहार में फैक्ट्री लगे चाहे नहीं स्कूल बने चाहे नहीं अयोध्या में राम मंदिर बन रहा है कि नहीं बन रहा है आपने वोट दिया नीतीश कुमार को घर घर बिजली लाने के लिए तो बिहार में चाहे जितना बदहाली है बिजली का बिल दो आ रहा है कि छह घरे घर बिजली आया है कि नहीं आया आपने वोट दिया जात के नाम पर नेता को तो आपके लोगों का बच्चों का चाहे कितना दुर्दशा है जो जिस जात का नेता है वो बढ़िया राजा बनकर घूम रहा है कि नहीं घूम रहा है आपने वोट दिया मोदी जी का चेहरा देख के विधायक सांसद को आप नहीं पहचानते हैं मोदी जी के नाम पर वोट दे दिए तो विधायक सांसद का चेहरा देखने को मिले चाहे नहीं मोदी जी का रोज चेहरा टीवी में देखने को मिल रहा है कि नहीं मिल रहा है आपने वोट दिया की मोदी जी ने गुजरात में बड़ा विकास किया तो भैया गुजरात में विकास हो रहा है गुजरात में फैक्ट्री चल रही है और आपके बच्चे जाकर गुजरात में मजदूरी कर रहे हैं कि नहीं कर रहे <laughs> तो कौन सा बात आप वोट दिए हैं जो आपको नहीं मिला आपने खुद कहा कि आपने अपने बच्चों के पढ़ाई के लिए वोट नहीं दिया आपने अपने बच्चों के लिए रोजगार के लिए वोट नहीं दिया तो आप हमको बताइए अगर आप अपने बच्चों का चिंता नहीं कीजिएगा तो कोई बल कोई नेता आपके बच्चे का चिंता काहे करे या yeah.